after the French Revolution, Europe was in anarchy, riots were breaking out in the streets, and Napoleon controlled the continent. Only one man could restore order in Europe by any means necessary. This is Clemens von Metternich, and this is how he became the puppet master of Europe. Before the revolution, the riots and the repression, we have to go back to the 1770s and the mess of a country that was the Holy Roman Empire. The empire was a thousand years old, with political institutions that hadn't been revised for centuries. So if anybody was resistant to change, it was those guys. Which brings me to Metternich. His family had been around for 500 years. He knew his place in the world, being a rich aristocrat, and he was ready to become a diplomat. And then he goes to university in France. And while Metternich studied history, politics and law, the world was breaking around him. Due to the debt crisis, the king has called a nationwide assembly to raise more taxes. The third estate, who pay all the taxes, say they want more political power. Maybe the king shouldn't have all the power, since he pays no taxes and his wife buys stupid amounts of jewellery during a massive ass debt crisis. Screw the king! Meanwhile, the food crisis from last year is still running low and riots are breaking out. The king has brought more troops into the city to restore order. Hey, did you hear the peasants storm some building in Paris? Wait, what? France was exploding into revolution, and Paris was rioting. Metternich was 300 miles away though, and throughout the year he was pretty far from all the violence. But he hears about this, the storming of the Bastille, murdering the Paris governor, the peasants in the countryside burning houses and burning debt papers, and people dragging the king back to Paris. To him, this isn't liberty. This is anarchy. What the hell is happening? You can't just give people the freedom to do whatever they want and let them overthrow people. The country is literally destroying itself. But even though Metternich saw it as anarchy, it inspired a lot of people, especially closer to home. Ooh, look, the French are revolting, and the king doesn't care about them. They're actually getting some results. Do you want to try it? And so, the Belgians in the Holy Roman Empire revolted, and the guy that had to put it down was Metternich's dad. Hey, do you want some experience putting down a revolt? Thought you wanted to become a diplomat. Do I have to? Yes. So, why exactly are you revolting against the king? We want freedom! Turns out there were two types of people that were revolting. The people that wanted to form their own country, and the people that were revolting because the king was trying to increase control in Belgium. So Metternich's dad said, Oh, those people that want to have their own country, they're against religion. Meanwhile, back in France, the revolution started getting more aggressive, and the king tried to escape France, but he got captured crossing the border. What? He doesn't want to go along with this? Removing his power and, you know, giving more liberty to us? He's gonna sell us out! He's a traitor! He was losing popularity, so to try and unite the country, he decides to redirect all this anger to somebody else. So he goes to war with the Holy Roman Empire. So Metternich, since he was doing a pretty good job with the revolt in Belgium, he got told he's going to Britain to get a loan for the war. And while he was there, he watched Parliament argue about whether they should actually go to France to fight the revolution and help the king out. I don't think we should intervene. The people only want freedom. They've been oppressed for long enough. Yeah, that might be true, but the ideas are dangerous. Overthrowing the rich and powerful, overthrowing the king, allowing democracy. Pretty much everyone in here would be out of a job so fast. Yes, it's already starting to spread. We can't have people thinking this sort of stuff. It's dangerous. We have to help Louis and crush the revolution. So now that France was at war with the Holy Roman Empire, the king in the empire thought, oh, it's going to be easy. France can't even stop rights in their own cities. There's no way they can stop an invading army as well. Well, the French go, we've got 650,000 troops. They're pretty committed to fighting, and they don't really like the idea of you coming in and taking away our freedoms that we've just gained from the king. And they smashed the Holy Roman Empire and started invading across the border into Belgium to bring liberty, equality, and the guillotine. And Metternich and his dad had to leave. Now the revolution broke out of France, this idea of spreading liberty, 
equality, overthrowing the rich and powerful, and more rights for the poor, couldn't be contained. And it had people in the government panicking. So the foreign minister, the guy that said, oh, I'll go to war with France, it'll be easy, said, how could you not stop an army that five countries couldn't be? Metternich's dad, and by association Metternich, is completely unqualified. So Metternich and his dad got fired. Meanwhile, Metternich was watching what was happening in France. He saw the king get beheaded, the reign of terror, and its thousands of executions. And he watched while the French kept steamrolling the Holy Roman Emperor's armies that tried to stop them, spreading liberty, egalitarianism, and breaking news. The French army in Italy is 72 miles from Vienna. I suggest panicking. This is where a 28-year-old military general enters the story, Napoleon Bonaparte. And he was destroying all the armies the Empire was throwing at him. He was outside the capital, and the Emperor told Metternich and his dad, It's your job to negotiate peace and stop him from destroying the city. We want to negotiate a treaty. Okay, so what do you want? We want territory on the left side of the- No, come on, really? We have to wait for Napoleon to come back and sign off on this negotiation. But uh, Napoleon wasn't going to come back anytime soon to do that. So they sat around for two years. Um, so the French just invaded Switzerland when they said they wouldn't. So we're going back to war. We can surely win this time. And Metternich was now out of a job. Again. Then he heard the news. There's a coup in France. The army's taken over. Led by this guy named Napoleon. And after he crushed all opposition in France, France was now only focused on war and spreading the revolution to other countries. And the empire started losing badly and had to surrender. Again. So, after a decade conflict, the massive failure of three wars with France and losing 150,000 soldiers, the empire was basically broke and they had no armies to fight with. Napoleon took a load of territory and the Holy Roman Empire got changed to the Austrian Empire. The Emperor realised he needed to change fast. So the guy that told the Emperor, Ah, oh, go to war with France, it'll be so easy, was fired. Is there anyone that hasn't fucked up yet? So Metternich got told he's now the ambassador to France and he had to stop Napoleon from ending the empire for good. But then he looks and he realises all this fighting and gaining territory for France wasn't sustainable and any peace that Napoleon made wasn't going to last. So he waited to gather intelligence and find a good chance for Austria to strike. So we've conquered and basically allied with everyone on the continent. Well, except for Portugal. So the French got permission by Spain to go into Spain, go through Spain and invade Portugal. And while Napoleon's marching all his men across Spain to Portugal, he decides, I might as well just take over Spain. But the people in Spain didn't exactly like this, especially when they protested and the French shot hundreds of people. The Spanish started to attack the soldiers, and Napoleon's troops couldn't maintain control. So Napoleon sent more troops, and some more troops, and then a load more troops. Meanwhile, Metternich's in Paris, being the ambassador, and hearing about all this, he thinks, Napoleon's losing support because of all his soldiers dying in Spain, and they probably can't spare any more troops, and because all of his troops are in Spain, we should probably attack him now. So the Emperor, taking Metternich's advice, they got smashed at Wagram. Whose idea was it to fight him again? Uh, me? Ah, well that's not your fault, he is stupid good at this, and you did do a good job of keeping us out of trouble for two years. Do you want to be the new Foreign Minister? He accepted, and he had to watch while Napoleon took another chunk of territory out of Austria. And it's a testament to all the other diplomats in Austria that they managed to stop Napoleon from wiping it off the map. But Metternich had to do it by allying with France. But even though he stopped Napoleon for now, Austria wasn't exactly in the most secure position. And he needed to make a plan to survive for the next few years and get rid of Napoleon at the same time. Okay, so basically, we have no friends. Napoleon has forced everyone to be his friend, and he made it so we can't have a lot of troops in our army since we have a tendency to go to war against him. A lot of people like this, 
and want to invade. But my main idea is to break his friendships with other countries and get them to get rid of him for us. The only country with enough troops to do it right now is Russia, but they're allied with France. So if we get them to turn against France, we might have a chance. So a few months later, Napoleon divorces his wife, Josephine, and he needed to marry somebody royal because no one was going to respect his empire if he married a commoner. And Metternich hears that he wants to marry the emperor's daughter. He tells the emperor, look, I know this is humiliating, having to marry your daughter to the enemy, but the Russian king was really terrified when I told him. The Russian king wants Napoleon to marry his daughter, and this might make them fight. So when Napoleon did invade Russia, two years later, he did it with 600,000 troops. Metternich was terrified. Napoleon has all of Europe to fight with. Even we had to give soldiers. The Russian Tsar hasn't got enough troops. He's going to get destroyed. And then Napoleon starts winning a few battles. But then Metternich hears nothing for three months. Turns out winter came early and Napoleon's whole strategy of rushing the emperor, capturing Moscow so he has to surrender, wasn't exactly working because the Russian Emperor burned all 400 kilometers going to Moscow and Napoleon's army was starving and also dying of cold. Even after managing to capture Moscow, the Russian Emperor knew Napoleon was going to be screwed, so he didn't surrender and Napoleon had to turn back with only supposedly 27,000 troops. Metternich sees his chance. Since Napoleon has got his ass handed to him and he brought so many troops to Russia, he's lost so much that he really can't project the power he needs to anymore. Do you guys want to team up again? So he gets Prussia, Russia and pretty much everyone else in Europe to fight Napoleon. And two months later, with a million men, they start attacking. Except Austria. Austria wasn't ready to fight and plus they were still allied with France and Napoleon still thought they were his friends. But if everyone ended up beating Napoleon now without Austria, Austria wouldn't get a say in any territory they got back from him because they didn't even fight. So Metternich sees another opportunity. He could be the negotiator and stop any war with France before it starts. So he starts talking with Russia, England and France about a peace treaty. But he knows any peace treaty isn't going to last because everyone in Europe had spent 10 years at least fighting France and they weren't going to stop until Napoleon had all his territory removed. And Napoleon wasn't going to give up all his territory because the whole reason he took power was to crush France's enemies, spread liberty and equality and bring more territory for France. Messenich said to him, just make peace, go back to the pre-revolution borders, I'll make the treaty. Napoleon said no and Prussia and Russia started to fight him and drive Napoleon back into France. Meanwhile, Metternich bides his time to build up troops and join the coalition. And then Napoleon starts winning. They said to Metternich, okay, looks like we can't win this war without Austria. Please help us. So now, six months later, he joins the war against Napoleon. And they started beating him and Napoleon had to flee back to France. But now Napoleon was on the run and victory was in sight, everyone started talking about what they were going to do after Napoleon was gone, and what they'd do with his territory. When we get rid of Napoleon, I'm putting my friend, the King of Sweden, on the throne. You can't do that. I sacrificed 400,000 men and burned 400 kilometers of farmland. My peasants are starving. Either I get what I want, or I fight you too. At the same time, Metternich said to Napoleon, look, your back's up against the wall. We've got all of Europe fighting you. You're back in France, you've lost. Accept peace. He needed Napoleon to accept peace and still remain the ruler of France, so he could stop Russia trying to put somebody else on the throne and gain even more power. But Napoleon hears from his spies, there's a load of arguing between the Allies. This is good. He was waiting for it to all break apart because Napoleon had just enough soldiers to crush the armies one by one. So they break up and Napoleon started beating them, one by one. And Russia was terrified after they lost a battle with him and agreed with Metternich, alright, if he does see for peace, I'll do it. 
And then the British Foreign Minister arrives. I know that Napoleon can't remain on the throne. He's not the kind of guy that would just sit back and just be happy with the territory he's given. We have to oust him. So they got back together and overthrew Napoleon. The Allies restored the French monarchy, the same guys that the French people had overthrown 20 years earlier. Finally, France is at peace. Metternich wasn't convinced though. Yeah, they got rid of Napoleon, but now France's revolution was basically stopped, and all the countries in Europe were broke from 20 years of war. People started to look at the French Revolution and say, It wasn't all bad. Freedom of speech sounds good. Maybe we should have a say in our government. And maybe kings shouldn't have all the power. Metternich hears that people want reform, more democracy, and less power for kings. This was dangerous. So he says to the ambassadors of France, Britain, Prussia, and Russia, We have to agree that if any revolts happens in any of our countries, we all have to send troops to help. We need peace and stability. One of the main ideas he was worried about was nationalism. Ever since the French started invading other countries, they set up local governments. Italians ruled Italy, Belgians ruled Belgium, and Poles ruled Poland. And since the Austrian Empire had all three in their borders, this could cause some problems. He knew that he couldn't just repress the idea, he actually had to give something to the people, because the best way to stop nationalism is to include people in your government. And if we do that, no one has a reason to revolt. Nah, I want to keep my power, can't we just repress them instead? So he spies on everyone, and had a network of spies to infiltrate any revolutionary groups and stop any revolts. But that was only in Austria, and all the other German countries weren't exactly doing a lot to stop any liberal ideas or revolts. So he needs a reason to get everyone to do what he did, repress freedom of speech. So, when a conservative German author was assassinated by liberal revolutionaries, Metternich saw his chance. He calls all the ambassadors together and it said, it could be any one of us. Any one of the kings could be killed. I could be killed. I have an idea to stop this. And so he called all the German states together to pass the Carlsbad Decrees firing any teacher that taught revolutionary stuff, blacklisting them from any other university, and any student that got involved in subversive stuff couldn't have any public career. And everything, and I mean everything, got censored. But outside Germany, revolutionaries weren't as censored, and in 1820, Spain revolted and forced the king to have a constitution to strip away most of his power. Then Portugal revolted, and then the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, which was right next to the Austrian Empire. So Metternich got really worried. So Metternich got everyone in the alliance to meet again, to decide what they were going to do, but they weren't exactly on the same page. Britain was kind of uneasy about all this intervening in other countries and putting down revolts, all while the free press in Britain called them tyrants. So they didn't help, and France said, I don't want to go all the way to Italy, it's far too expensive. So, it was down to Austria, Prussia, and Russia to crush any revolts. And they asked the King of the Two Sicilies, Do you want help? Yes, I do. And the Austrian army managed to crush it. But there was still the revolt in Spain, and Prussia didn't want to do it alone. Austria had to keep its army in Italy to stop any revolts. But Russia was like, oh, I'll help you crush the revolt. I'll march 150,000 troops across Europe. But Metternich knew that if Russia brought troops to Western Europe, they'd stay. So that left only France to do anything. So the French did, and they crushed the revolt in Spain. So all the revolts were crushed. But to Metternich, this whole mess made it clear there was only a limit to how far Europe could actually work together to crush revolutionaries. On one side, you have the British not intervening in anything, and you have the Russians wanting to intervene in everything. At least the revolts were crushed. Well, except one. So, did you guys hear about the Greeks revolting? Yes, we've decided to help. Our ships are leaving today. Wait, what the hell? Yeah, plus we get to beat up the Ottomans. Don't you see that giving the Greeks independence and crushing them whilst also trying to prevent that stuff in Europe could cause problems? No. So Metternich had to watch while everyone ignored him and no one was really in the mood to work together anymore. All of the revolts were crushed anyway, so liberal ideas couldn't spread, 
and the kings would stay in power. Four years later, it's 1830, King Louis XVIII of France is dead. He knew the revolution in France was here to stay, so he worked with liberals to make a constitution, have elections, have freedom of speech, and freedom of the press. But his younger brother Charles didn't like this, and so when he took power, he tried to reverse everything and turn back the clock. So in 1830, he dissolved the Senate, suspended freedom of the press, and stopped the middle class from voting in elections. People got predictably angry and started building barricades and ran the king out of France. Metternich hears this, and he legit fainted at the news. But then, a couple days later, he gets the news. France didn't make a republic again, they just gave the crown to the king's cousin. And Metternich said, Alright, it seems pretty chill, I mean there's still a monarchy. If it gets really bad, and they talk about war, then we intervene. But all the liberals heard that France revolted over freedom of speech, and they got that stuff back, and Metternich, and all the other countries didn't really do anything about it. So, Belgium, Poland, and Italy revolted, and Metternich held another congress to decide what to do. France said you can't crush the revolt in Belgium because the people in Paris really like the revolt, and if the king intervenes, they might overthrow him and make another republic. And you guys don't exactly want that, do you? They crushed the revolt in Poland and put down the revolt in Italy, but Belgium was there to stay. Now nothing else was really happening in Europe, or so he thought. Because the idea of revolting, having freedom of press and speech, never went away. It just got more sneaky, and people started to organise and actually plan out a way to overthrow their empires, overthrow Metternich, and spread liberty, equality, and democracy. And they got their chance in 1848. When food prices were soaring, the people were hungry and angry. France had revolted, the king had been overthrown, and the Austrians saw Metternich. The guy that broke up their groups arrested their friends, and the guys controlling the riots mostly students who had their freedom of speech taken away, said, Metternich has to go or we burn the city down. The king can stay in power. So Metternich, finally, after 40 years in government, had to retire. And while in retirement, he met this young diplomat, Otto von Bismarck. Well, you're a good diplomat. I see a bright future for you, with Austria and Prussia jointly ruling Germany. Yeah, jointly. Metternich had to go to Britain, he lived there for a few years, came back to Austria in the 1850s, but stayed out of government and politics. And he finally died in 1859. And no matter how hard he tried, the revolutions he tried so hard to stop came anyway. Metternich tried to be a puppet master, but there were too many things out of his control. <laughs>